Alright, what is up, lovely ladies and gentlemen? As you can see from the title, I'm sure you know what to expect at this point, but let me first state outright, before we get to the negativity, let me do a tiny little bit of positivity to try to offset everything that's about to go down here. Darlos 9D, thank you very much for suggesting that I should give Scholar of the First Sin a shot. You were right. Uh, it does improve upon Dark Souls 2, but there are also some other things that I don't really agree with. And so because of that, we got this whole thing. So I'm not trying to say, you know, like, oh, this game sucks. Everything about it sucks. It's got some, po it's got positives, it's got negatives. It's not as good as Dark Souls 1, but that's neither here nor there. Dark Souls 2 is Dark Souls 2. Act, I mean, compare it to itself. Don't compare it to uh, its past, because when you're comparing something to what is probably the damn nearest thing to a masterpiece in gaming, of course it's going to come up short. So, I'm not going to be doing any comparisons between any of the From Software games. I am just going to literally, I wrote some shit down while I was playing. I am going to literally just read straight from this. If I have to set the stage to properly uh, give you the imagery necessary or to uh, tell you exactly what's going on, I will do so. But otherwise, I am going to just uh, read exactly what I have written. So point number one, almost no attacks rebound off shield. How is this shit realistic? Point number two. Adaptability is the worst. Point number three. Now, I'll freely grant that this one is actually kind of not really... Uh, it was just an initial, very snap judgment on my part. I thought, like, oh, this is going to be exactly what the whole game is. Okay, you guys are really fucking smart. You guys are great developers. This is what you think is difficult, is just throwing more shit at you. So that's what I have right here. More does not equal better. And the where that note came from is that if there's a... I always, every single time I've ever played Dark Souls 2, I always make my way through the tutorial area, get to the main hub, Majula, or however the hell you pronounce it, and before I actually go to the places where you can move forward to progress, whether it be the Haida Tower or the uh, Forest of the Fallen Giants, I always go around to that section where that, like, Scottish dude is chilling with the fake Moonlight Greatsword, and uh, your way is blocked by one of those statues that you need to use a, uh, one of those, whatever, fragrant your piece thing, whatever, fuck them. Those will be up quick. But, so I always went there, and then you gotta kill these two little dudes, there's some items around, that you know, like I said, there's that NPC to talk to. So I just do all that shit first before I move on and actually go places where I can progress. And so the, one of my very first experiences in the game, thanks to this, I go to that area, I open up the door, I start to hit one dude, I'm in a tiny little, like, contained prison cell, all of a sudden, five more motherfuckers swarm in behind me. I don't know how I managed to get out alive, I did not actually die to it, and thankfully they are in what is an absolutely wonderful example of excellent coding. There was a very, very convenient, do not cross this line bit on the map where they just would not come past so it was quite easy to just pick them off one by one by just you know crossing that line running in smacking them a time or two running back um so i don't i mean like i said i don't know how the fuck i didn't die but i was very mad at that situation because it's like cause that that always makes me angry when people think that oh just because i threw 10 dudes at you out of nowhere and got you a cheap kill for a cheap laugh means this game is difficult ha <laughs> ha that's bullshit game design and i hate it but the rest of the game so far hasn't really i mean there's been a couple other moments but it has not been anywhere near as uh pervasive throughout the game as i thought it would end up being so that's not really that big of a point anyway number four why the fuck do backstabs take so much stamina like i get one backstab it basically takes my entire stamina bar God forbid I do a backstab on something and there are two other dudes around me that, you know, and obviously you gotta sit there and you gotta hold the animation. You can't, you know, cancel out of the animation. You can't do anything with it. You gotta sit there and wait for the animation to finish. So if there are additional dudes standing around you and you do a backstab to get a quick kill on one of them, you come out of the backstab, now you have no stamina. Good luck dodging those maces that are coming straight for your head. Some bullshit. Ha! 
how the fuck actually I should say what was that number five number five how the fuck did I just ignite barrels by rolling through them real talk how am I igniting barrels by rolling through them science I almost said bloodborne I don't know why science from software please Oh, this is the biggest point. Number six! To set the story. Hyda Night Tower so far has been one of the most changed sections of the game. And there's actually basically uh, two notes? Three notes? Three notes, I think, that are that, are, that stem from that one specific area. Uh, but this particular one, they put a dragon directly uh, blocking your way to the old dragon slayer. And so if you pay attention to the name of that particular boss, therefore stems my note. Why is there a dragon? Why isn't the old dragon slayer doing his fucking job? He's two steps away. Bullshit. Number whatever the fuck. These fucking fragrant bran- Oh, that's what they're called, fragrant branches of yours. These fucking fragrant branches of your statues. One in the goddamn tutorial area? Blocking the way to the ruin sentinels? What the fuck is this? Real talk. That's stupid. Like, they're just throwing them around like, Hey, why the fuck not? It's ridiculous. Why are you blocking an area that I inherently need that is required of me to get through in order to progress in like the main game that wasn't there by inherent design that one that is blocking your way that I talked about at the very beginning there's uh there's that lady that you have to use the statue on that is the only one that I am aware of that it was required in the main game in order to actually beat the game Actually, I guess it's uh, it's not technically required because you can do the whole soul memory bull. I'm not even talking to talk about soul memory. It's just everybody has heard every argument under the sun. There's no point in throwing my hat into that. But it's just uh, so that's one that's one way. You don't have to go through and kill the lost sinner because you can get through without the four uh, whatever they're called old grand souls, whatever the shit they are. So it's not required, but it's still like you're blocking access to a main part of the game not through like a really difficult enemy that if I really really buckled down and tried I could make my way through I could beat them if I really truly gave a really good effort get a solid pat on the back from daddy over it some shit like that but it is actually blocked by a game mechanic that at that point I didn't have any fragrant branches of yore I had zero. The only one that was available was one that I think I think it's sold by a merchant for 16,000 souls. That's a lot of fucking souls that early in the game. 16,000? Practically nothing once you get through like the first 70% of the game. 16,000 in your first, you know, three or four hours of gameplay? That's hefty. I'm not gonna spend that. But it's so, like, just the arbitrary placement of so many more of these statues. I don't even know where there are gonna be more of them. I know I heard one that was like made speedrunners actually kind of lose their shit because it blocked off the bonfire directly outside ooh what's his name the rotten because that was one of the speedrunning routes was to uh burn bonfire ascetics and kill the rotten four times or five times or something like that in order to get the soul memory necessary so you didn't have to go through all the areas and they just threw one directly on so that speedrunners could not get there without using a fragrant branch of yore. It just, it seems really, I think that's my biggest problem, is that a lot of things in this game, they were not added to make an improvement to the game. They were not added uh, as, because, you know, like, oh, you know, we thought, we it, it was a mistake not to do this. It seems like it's just added in order to just be spiteful. In order to just say, ha gotcha. That kind of shit, which is retarded theory uh, when you're trying to come up with things to put into a game. But so anyway, I've spent enough time on that one. This one right here is a little bit, uh, I just still want to read the note. I will get into it. Number 9, 10, 13, I don't fucking know. Where the fuck did this pursuer randomly come from? Bro, seriously. 
I was in the Lost Bastille. Uh, I think it's somehow. I don't. I don't know how this happened. There is one section of the game where you go to it. There's a chest with some very nice items in it. Uh, but you have to come in from the back way into the Lost Bastille. Actually, I don't know which one's considered the back way or the front way. But the way that you know you get to by beating the pursuer in the first place, then you get to that. Um, uh, what the fuck is it called? You get to that bonfire that's in the tower, and then um, so you're on one side, and then the other side you have to come in by taking the ship from the port. So there's two different sides that you can get to. They're both locked. Like you can't get to one or the other side. You have to come from the bonfires on both ends in order to fully explore the area. So the area that you have to come through through beating the pursuer, you get taken there by like an eagle or a hawk or some kind of bird, uh, leads you to that area where it summons a pursuer. I was not on that side of the map. I was on the opposite side. I had never unlocked the route from the other way yet. I had not gone that way. And so I'm just walking around, exploring, having a merry old time, and then all of a sudden, just from fucking nowhere, I get backhanded by a pursuer. From literally nowhere. Somehow, I managed to get close enough to the area where the game actively spawned it, and then it sent that dude all the fucking way around. I don't know how he got to me. I literally don't because, like I said, there's only one way. I think. Ah, uh, can you drop off? I don't think. Oh, yes, you can. You can't. No, but he came from the other end. Because that's the thing. I think you can drop off of. No. No, I don't think you can. I don't think it's possible to get from one side. No, it's, I don't think it is. I think they're both closed off to each other. Like, they're entirely. You cannot access one the other half of the area without starting in that half um so i have no idea how even path found to me but it was just out of fucking nowhere so that didn't make me happy this is where i finally got to actually let me use this as the last note so this note right here numbers 23 4 16 10 i really dislike their treatment of the white knights I think they're called. I think they're just called like Hyda Knights, White Knights of Hyda, or something like that. So in the original Dark Souls 2, they were non-respawning enemies that were just in certain parts of the game. They had a hundred percent chance to drop. I think whatever weapon they had, and maybe like a percentage chance to drop armor or something like that. I'm not entirely sure how their drops worked. I didn't really delve into it deeply enough to know, but I do know they always dropped a weapon. But they were always they were at set points. So they didn't respawn. So the very first one you're likely to run into was in the Forest of the Fallen Giants. There was a second one in the Lost Bastille. Uh, third one was... I don't actually know what the area is, but I, I, could, like, I can envision it in my mind, but I can't remember what the area was called. Anyway, point being, I really... I liked the idea of what that kind of represented. That, like, these are a lost order of knights. They don't really know... They're not doing anything. They're completely lost. They don't know what to do with their lives. You know, their king is gone. Who knows what's happening for them? Like, they are just devastated. They don't move. They don't do anything. The only thing they finally do is react to getting attacked. And that just kind of... That really was, like, a cool kind of thing to have in the game. And now it's just, oh, they're just regular enemies that are part of the Hyda Tower, and that's all that it is. Like, they don't... That's just, they're just there now you know there's nothing that really speaks about them being kind of like a really crippled order of knights of like elite warriors or some shit like that it's just like nope now they're just part of that area and that's that that's all that's special about them so that really disappointed me because i really liked the concept of them previously and now it's just like fuck them whatever fuck them <laughs> so here's the final note and this is basically stems from where i have gotten to in the game right now all I want to do is punch things, but the fucking hitboxes suck. God damn it. So for those of you that uh, may not have seen the prior video of my Dark Souls 2 efforts, I am power stancing the Kaistus. Kaistus. I think it's, it might be Cestus, but I think it's like Kaistus. Anyway, pronunciation is irrelevant. Uh, I'm trying to go around power stancing them. And at first, I thought it was really good. I was doing really well. You know, I was able to stagger things. Stuff was going really well. And the first kind of question mark popped up after I killed the old Dragon Slayer. Not the old Dragon Slayer. The Dragon Rider. After killing him, all of the enemies that were in the Haida Tower area got a lot harder. They, got, they had more health. They became more aggressive. 
uh, the aforementioned white knights beforehand they always well there was a certain set of them if you started to go towards the old dragon slayer instead of the dragon warrior there were dragon rider oh my god figure out the names uh, I think there were two white knights that would aggro on you like they didn't wait to be attacked but the rest of them in the area just waited to be attacked once you kill the old dragon rider I don't think there's old in there once you kill the dragon rider they start to you know get up move around they aggro to you they attack you on sight that kind of thing uh and so beforehand i was able like i thought it was really the reason why i thought it was really fucking cool to be using these weapons is that i was able to go blow for blow with them like i was able to just rush in and start punching them in the face taking some shots to the face and i always came out on top right like i had to heal afterwards obviously it's not an intelligent idea to be able to do that but after i killed the dragon rider I could not do that. I couldn't even get them down to half health before I had to be like, okay, shit, time to back up, time to run away, gotta heal, gotta, okay, time to start avoiding attacks. And, um, so that kind of happened. And then I got to the, uh, the area after the, uh, Dragon Rider. I can't remember what it's called, but the, that, whatever that port is. And so I'm getting through the area and I start fighting those giant, blue little you know huge arm looking dudes you know i went through the regular guys and regular guys in the area pretty decently it wasn't too difficult but then like i said i got to those huge blue demon looking motherfuckers with the arms that are like twice the size of them and i got to a point where actually my what my the fist weapons were almost broken and so i had to shift them out for something i didn't have anything else so i just shifted them out for the fire longsword it was unupgraded. At that point, my Kaistus were around... Pl I, they were either plus four or plus five. I can't remember exactly which one. And I had respectable strength and dexterity because they uh, they had A scaling on strength and B scaling on dexterity. And I think at that point in time, I had around 18 strength and 14 dexterity, something like that. So, you know, nothing amazing, nothing to write home about. I haven't gotten far enough through the uh, game to be able to really have, you know, huge scaling and huge stats. But the fact is, I have these weapons... They're at plus five, power stance. I'm basically inherently making the game harder on myself by not using a shield. So you would think there would be at least some sort of reward in that for me. So then I start using the, I switched out and I, because after that happened, I switched out between the fire long sword, the broad sword, and whatever that other sword that you get from the uh, dual wielding dudes in that area drop. All three of those completely unupgraded at that point in time were either equal dps or completely outclassed power stance kaistus pissed me the hell off made me so mad and then on top of that the reason why this actually came up is that i keep hitting dudes but you never want to hit them from behind like that's the first thing i've learned you never want to hit them from directly head on or directly from behind you always want to hit them from the side because anytime these dudes hurt boxes lean at all they completely lean out of the range of your punches and you will just stand there and whiff like four punches in a row and then they'll be recovered and ready to throw another uh, attack of their own which you don't want to get you can't stand there and take it you don't have a shield to block it and uh, power stancing removes parrying the uh, powerful left-handed attack turns into like this three hit swing thing uh very slow not i don't advise it i mostly just use the regular uh left attacks it's just this quick one two punch it's very fast does pretty decent damage uh but anyway yeah it's just the hitboxes on them are just they're so terrible it's just like i need to you know rip these dudes arms off that are in that fucking port area and just put the kaistus on the end of those and start swinging with that or some shit because it's not gonna work any other way so uh yeah it's been kind of like it started out so fun it started out like oh my god i'm power stancing these fucking knuckles i feel like a goddamn badass this is so much fun and now it's just quickly rapidly declined to the point where like i can't fight anything i like take three quarters of my health per hit and I do like one one hundredth of a percent of damage. Not one one hundredth of a percent. But like I do, you know, I do like one percent per attack to these guys. And it's not a good look. So that really, that's really made me sad. But anyway, I just thought that might be a fun little thing to do. And I did this because uh, 
I have to take a little bit of a break for various reasons that I will get to. Uh, eventually, you'll hear about it, you'll know about it, you'll understand why, but I don't want to get into them now because they are not relevant now. They don't matter right now. But So I do have to take a little bit of a break from Dark Souls 2, and because of that, I just decided to do this right now so I can get rid of these notes and close off a notepad++ plus plus file and move along with my life and stuff and hopefully come back to a patch that increases the range of the Kaistos by about 25 times because it's sad. All right, thank you for listening. Appreciate it. Hope you enjoyed some bitching. Peace out.